building a gaming PC under 120 euros? Let me show you how. Hey all and welcome to another video on the channel of TechCat. I was looking online for cheap computers and, well, I found myself a great deal. I found a Dell T35100 workstation that someone was selling together with a bunch of other old computers. This model only came with an Intel Xeon W3530, 2.4 GHz, 6 GB DDR3 memory, 150 GB hard drive, and an NVIDIA Quadro VPS 295. Although these specs aren't all that amazing, these machines can be upgraded easily to have some great specifications. Now I could search Google to find these specifications, but I thought, why Google when you can ask AI? When asking a question, I always like to add the part that the answer should be brief, as I'm just looking for some clear info. Now that we know the max configuration, it is time to upgrade. When we max out the performance of this PC, the graphics card should be able to hold up. I therefore chose to use the AMD RX 580, the 8GB model, which I was able to get for only 70 euro. Then, as the PC came with an old hard drive, I also bought a 500GB SSD for around 37 euro. And then of course to max out the performance, I got hold of an Intel Xeon X5675 and 24GB of memory for only 35 euro. This brings the total cost of the PC build to 157 euro. As I was aiming to not spend over 120 euro on this build, I had to make some choices. Therefore I chose to sell the old Nvidia Quadro card that came with the PC for which I was able to still get 30 euro bringing the total build cost of the PC down to 127 euro which is close enough. As this PC is from 2012, you can imagine that after 11 years the dust buildup would be impressive. However it seems that the previous owner took quite good care of this. There is some dust here and there, but this we can clean up quickly before we install the new parts. I will start with the removal of the hard drive as I don't plan on using this anymore. Then we can move the bracket out of the way to reach the memory and the processor. The memory is covered by this little plastic shroud for better cooling. This computer has six slots available for the memory. Currently, this is being occupied by six sticks of one gigabyte memory. We will replace this with the maximum that this machine can handle meaning 6 sticks of 4 GB to come to a total of 24 GB of memory. Would you like to see more of these kind of videos? Then I can recommend you subscribe to this channel as the future will hold many more projects like these. Now that we have placed the memory, we can move on to the processor. The processor is located underneath the heatsink which we will unscrew first. Once we take the heatsink of, we can see the processor snugly below it in its socket. The socket of the processor is held closed by a little metal clip which we can undo. After that we can take the processor out of its socket very carefully to avoid any damage to the small pins underneath. The processor cooler will still have the old cooling paste on it. We will clean this off to ensure that we will place the new processor with the new cooling paste as well. The processor can only fit in one way into the socket. We will make sure the arrow on the processor aligns with the arrow on the socket, after which we can close the socket with the metal clip to ensure the processor stays neatly in place. Now that this is done, we will put a small dab of cooling paste on top of the processor. If we were to use too much, we will actually block the cooling capacity of the cooler. Placing the cooler, we will ensure that we tighten the screws in a cross. If we were to tighten first the screws completely on one side, we would end up pushing all the cooling paste out instead of distributing it neatly. We will now place the plastic airflow shroud over the memory before we start with the installation of the SSD. The SSD will be installed by using only one screw. This isn't that important, as the SSD doesn't contain any moving parts such as an older hard drive. If we were to install the SSD as the best way possible, we should have bought a bracket that allows for the installation for the 2.5 inch SSD into a 3.5 inch hard drive slot. Unfortunately, our budget did not allow us this, therefore we will do the installation with only one screw. Then we connect the SATA cable and the power cable to the SSD which concludes the installation of the SSD. We can move on to the graphics card. The reason why making this video took longer is because unfortunately the graphics card was very delayed in the mail. However, now we have the card, we can do the installation to complete this build. 
Now that we are placing the AMD RX 580, you can see it only barely fits past the plastic shroud, but hey, at least it does fit. After clicking it into place, we can then close the metal bracket on the case, which will hold the graphics card tightly in place without the need of any screws. As the build is now complete, it is time to test. This is, no matter how many times you build a PC, always a bit of a scary moment until you finally see an image on the screen. Now that I've also installed Windows on the SSD, we can start our testing round to see how good the performance of this 127 euro PC is. I'm very excited to see the frame rates that we are going to get. The first game we are playing is called Counter-Strike Global Offensive or CSGO in short. The monitor I'm playing on ended up being 16x10 with a resolution of 1920x1200. The game had its settings on high and I must be honest the gameplay was amazing. This PC was not only running the game, no issue on these settings also it was extremely quiet. Overall a great experience with an average frame rate of around 180 frames per second with sometimes a peak towards almost 400 frames per second and sometimes in a bit busier moments. A drop towards 133 frames per second. The next game we are playing is called Halo Reach. This game was played on the same monitor with a resolution of 1920 by 1200 and also on high settings. This game played amazing as well. So good I ended up playing for several hours as I lost track of time. The frame rates here were again amazing with an average frame rate of around 180 frames per second, some highs of around 270 frames per second, and then sometimes 127 frames per second as the low amount. And then the last game that I ended up testing on the machine was Fortnite. This game I've been playing for years, but it is the first time I've seen such good graphics and such smooth gameplay. While playing this game, the frame rate was extremely stable, with an average frame rate of 90 frames per second, some peaks of 102 frames per second, and some lows of 81 frames per second. No matter the terrain or what was happening in game, the frame rate just stayed completely stable. I am really amazed by the kind of gameplay we can have with high settings on a computer of only 127 euros. Even though it isn't the newest hardware and you can't play 4K on high, the experience I've had on this computer really beats the other computers I have tested. All in all, I think that for the budget I had the PC build really turned out amazing. I hope all of you enjoyed this video and maybe leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more builds like this or reviews of other hardware. I hope you all have an amazing day.